Alright, welcome, welcome to the Ethan and Elvin Show. I'm your host, Ethan Zillner. I'm here with my best friend, Elvin. What's going on, Ethan? Uh, what's up, man? <sighs> Not much. We got, got an interesting debate to go off of later. Anyways, just want to remind everyone, we are on Apex Radio every Monday and Friday from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Like us on Facebook, subscribe on iTunes. We really, really appreciate it. <laughs> Anyways. So, well, in the big three, the competitive three-on-three league, uh-huh. it is counter suing the championship basketball league, the CBL, because what they're saying is they have nothing in writing about them having any players under any agreement stating that the CBL was like, oh, you guys have stolen players from us, and the big three's like, well, we're the contracts. We don't see anything in paper. We didn't have anything in writing, so what are you talking about? <laughs> So, has it ever happened to you before, though? Have you ever seen leagues suing other leagues for poaching players? Has that happened? No. I mean, when I was playing, it was all by out. But right? um, when I was in the CBA, <clears throat> you had an overseas team that was interested. Uh, it was um, 10, 15,000. Oh, okay. Sometimes more for a buyout. Uh, Depending on the player. Same thing with NBA, right? They wanted to call the players and they decided they wanted income. It was kind of a, a buyout thing. But, I mean, with this whole um, big three thing and the other league, but to be honest with you, I've never heard of the other league. Uh, what you, what's it called? Champion basketball, CDL? Like, yeah. Like, I've never heard of the league. And to say that, okay, um, well, you stole players, like, it's something different if he has. Like, honestly, to go after the league, that would be, like, the last option, right? Because you have to go after players. But in the still players, I mean, you have to have, I mean, you got to have a contract. You, there's no, I'm going to play for you off a vote or agreement. You know, something like that's not happening because players are going to protect themselves as well, right? So, I mean, what I'm thinking is happening is somebody said that, then maybe people feel they hear what I mean, might not do so well. Somebody else come along with the same idea, <clears throat> and it flourished the way it did. So now he's sitting back, and the players, but he might have talked to these players. They might have been like, yep. look, you come up with this, we in. You know, like I talked to such and such, you know, we can get these players, you know, we've been looking for something like this. And then you you like, okay, well, you know, we'll do it. I'll get back to you. And then you're just sitting on your hands, right? I mean, because if what he, if people were saying, if it was legit or if it was anything in stone, the players wouldn't win anyway. Hey, oh, well, we got this league going on there. So, I mean, it's just like he probably had an idea. Like I said, players were probably on board. And somebody came forth and started pushing that idea and making it a reality. And actually made it happen. And yeah. make it happen. So the players were like, well, we've been talking to you and you haven't been doing anything. The guys making stuff happen. This is where we're going. And now he's whoever they're over the league, they sit back and they kind of PO'd about it. And they're trying to come in any kind of way they can, but you can't, you can't tarnish that. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't. That thing, what they did this year was history, right? Like very good job. Yeah, and they turned they had a very good outcome, and I see it, you know, going on for uh, quite a while, you know. But it's just somebody just PO'd that the fact that they had the idea. They probably flirted with a little bit, never pushed it. Somebody else came along and had that same vision and made it work. And they're just sitting back and trying to look for anything. You know, like, I'm in the same boat as you. Yeah, so it's just, it, it makes no sense. I mean, I just, it doesn't make it too easy to try to sue over BS, man. <laughs> you know, like, so people even think that you can come with. We have no, nothing in writing with paper. We have, it ain't like we got this. I mean, if that's the case, then, I mean, it, you know, if you have the NBA or you have the ABA, right? Let's say you have the ABA, they would be suing the NBA. You get what I'm saying? That would have would, been happening. You know what I'm saying? You would have teams, you know what I'm saying? To be honest, which like we talk about the, the uh, NBLC, right? They would be getting sued by the PBL or, or other leagues like that because, you know what? This player would play with me for like two, three years, but you can offer him more money. We had a handshake agreement. Yeah, so and he came to play with you, you're still an offer. So and he signed a contract with you. Yeah, you can't do that. Go back and start in the same league and players decide, hey, I want to go here versus going there. Like, it doesn't work that way. That was the, same, that was the case, you know. <laughs> Television companies, phone companies, everybody <laughs> will be suing each other because, I mean, what's the difference between a magnet box and a Panasonic? It's the same thing, right? You know, a 50 inch flash when you flip it, but somebody says, you know what? I'm going to just, like, I'm going to take this and I'm going to push my brand to be better. And somebody else. I thought of this and he took it and made it better. So, um, you know, it's just, just better. Somebody said, Oh, well, then wait till you hear the research I did on this guy. I'm the CEO slash uh, 
commissioner, I guess you could say. He's the de facto commissioner, because they don't actually have one. Uh, he, first off, said to potential season ticket holders, as well as potential investors, and as well as potential owners who were looking to expand from other leagues to maybe join in, he was going. He was saying that every team was going to have one to two all stars, and when I mean all stars, he said they were only going to be ca uh, scouting NBA players, former NBA players. They ha would have at least five years' experience. Anything else, they wouldn't sign them. And as well as they'd have one to two all stars. I can't start. I can't get over this. Like if every that would be like an NBA team if they could have one to two all stars, that would be awesome. That would mean you're a top ten team. Yeah. You would have every team have two all-stars. Like, but not every team has two all-stars. That's bullcrap. Yeah. And anyways, they're saying uh, celebrity investors like Snoop Dogg were going to be investing as well. And if you had half a brain and you knew anything about this in the basketball world, you would just put your hand and be like, why would Snoop Dogg invest in here if he would just get NBA-level players in the NBA? He could just be a minority owner with some yeah. of the lower four teams. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I think yeah. it, was, it was trying to have a gift. That's a shit talker. Yeah, he was just, uh, you know, just from my perspective on it, and since he was trying to feed people something and sell, you know, he was just trying to sell it. Um, and I forgot something else, too. The, the constant saying, uh, well, uh, we're going to have two all-stars per team. You just take something, you're trying to gas it up, right? And I think I still came with a more of a reality vision. Like, mm -hmm. we're not going to have the, all the top 50. Eventually, we'll players like Paul Pierce. Josh Childress signed with the, an NBA team with the Nuggets. Yeah. He played in the Big Three. Yeah, Josh Childress. I'm not joking. Look it up. Josh Childress didn't play in the Big Three. Yeah, he did. Who we play with? Uh, I think it's like Three Headed Monster or something like that. Josh uh, Childress. Big Afro. You so went to Stanford. Or went to Stanford and got the NBA. Went and made like 20 million overseas. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, I didn't even know. He came. I know. I didn't. I was just scrolling through Bleacher Report and I saw that. I was like, oh, good for him. So if I'm Ice Cube, I try and promote that quite a bit throughout I mean, the season. Yeah, but you know, I mean, it speaks for itself. So. I mean, he don't like ice cube, he don't, and that, I don't think that he has to try to do too much pushing it, you know, due to the fact of the talent of it that he got in, the names that he has in, it's going to sell it. So, you know, people are going to want to come out and they're going to do that. All you have to do is just make sure that it's a basketball environment at all times, right? Like, it's going to, it's going to all just sell itself. So, Watching some of the highlights, it was good. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was good. I mean, because you're going to have, right about now, it's like, you know, it's a good idea because you're messing with it. Or you, you're kind of catering to both sides. Like me, I would go just to watch mm -hmm. the old Jason Williams mm -hmm. and the AI and um, Al Harrington, and Steve yeah, Jackson, and or, you know, Chris, like Jackson. Chris Jackson. You know, I go watch. You know, like you say, um, Steve and Jack. Like it's just all they that. I would, team yeah, I would go just to watch those guys. And then once they start having. You know, Al you Harrington know, led the league in scoring. Was the MVP? Yeah, so he I was like twenty-two points yeah, a game. I'm going to watch that. You know, but I mean, it's, you yeah. know, I think in that point they just make it and keep it more of a, a basketball. One to two all stars yeah, and a celebrity yeah. owner. Jesus Christ! Yeah, yeah, you have a top ten franchise just in terms of sales alone, yeah. just having a celebrity owner. Like Snoop Dogg. You can take your league and just legit make an NBA team out of it. So <laughs> if I'm if I'm the big three, I wouldn't even worry. I would just. Yeah. Nah, I'll make them slip, dude. I'll beat them. Yeah, yeah. like, Did you watch any of the Euro basket, by the way? I saw some highlights. You see that Luka Doncic guy? Mm -hmm. He's an 18-year-old. He's projected to be the number one overall pick. Oh, I really hope you guys didn't hear that. Anyways, um, he's projected to be the number one overall pick in 2018. He looks really good. You remember Hato Turkoglu? Were you a fan of him when he was playing with the Magic and he was most improved player? You were a fan? No. I mean, he was okay. He so plays he more athletic than him. I was a fan. I didn't mind him. I thought he was a smooth player. Yeah. But but I mean, it's, it's like, that's the thing about it. Right? It's like, and I'm not knocking it because I've seen guys overseas that can go. But he you, can go? No, it's just a complete, it's a, it's a different beast when you take them laws and you throw them out down the NBA court and expect them the same thing of them, though. Like, oh, that's true. I see what you're saying. It's a complete different beast. You know, it's like you, you, have, you have certain rules, right? Like, you know, you can't, like I said, with the sweep, you mm -hmm. know, you catch the ball, you sweep, you have to put it down before you even plant your other foot. Not your pivot foot, your lead foot. You have to put the ball down. Well, it's a travel. Mm -hmm. In the NBA, no, that's mm -hmm. not a travel. And any other way, any other way you go, it's not a travel. Yeah. You know, so you get so used to, like, that stuff. And, you know, it's, it, that's, it, it's just a big difference. That's why you see, like, these guys, they were like, oh, well, he was this and that, obviously, and that. Like, oh, Rudy Fernandez. 
Uh, right, right. Good point. Uh, good point. Uh, Schiller always said he's camping in NBA. I'm gonna leave this money here and I'm gonna go back over. I'm like, I could dominate the game. Kind of that's where twenty points game. Yeah, I think that's just how it be. You know, like you take a guy, even like Dirk, right? Like Dirk would say he was even contemplating. Even. You know, when he was starting off, yeah, when he was starting off, and over there he was putting up nice numbers, right? Like, True. you know, the, the Bazingas and stuff like that. They're like, I think he's gonna be legit though. Of him, just yeah. giving him the quick eye test from what I've seen, he looks good. I have to take a look at him, but I mean, he went you can't at Chris Stapps for Zingas. Yeah, you just can't just off of Euro. I mean, you gotta think though too, man. Like, it's like there's this. only one or two guys no, on well, it's not that. It's, it's like this. If I'm in to go, if I'm if I'm in to make five, six million dollars this year, I'm not gonna go and hurt myself. In Euro basket. So you're not giving 100 percent. You're not. Oh, like, 85 percent. I'm just part of the Olympics. They, if he, you know, he, he got somebody beside him. This is a qualifier. If to he get got to the Olympics. If he got somebody beside him, then maybe yeah. But still, I mean, you gotta think, man. And what's the? It's because basketball has come. It, it's left the hard. Right? It's, it's a brand, now, right? Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna go out here. I'm not gonna hurt. I, I play hard. I can dribble, but I'm not gonna go above and beyond. Percentage like of 100. Do, like I would do on an NBA court. You know, so I'm not going to come out here like that. You know, if they don't do that anymore. Yeah, but what's your percentage out of 100 that you give? They, would probably, they would probably go about, because, yeah, I think guys like Pazine is tough. He can go out there and probably go 80. No problem. And, and Say 5% maybe. Yeah, you know, he can still, and, and still, what's the But NBA games, he's going 100% every yes, night. Yes, he's going 100% every night. But like I said, man, if, if, you, if you're guaranteed to make five, six million, you can blow a knee out. Let's say, you're in, let's say right now you're playing for like the Mavs or something. You're guaranteed to make five or six mid, all right? But they call you up and say, Ethan, we want you to play for Canada qualifying team. I'm doing it. Yeah, you're going to do it, but you're not going to come up and be the Ethan that you are in the NBA. Yeah. Man, you're crazy, man. Because the minute you tie something or break something, dude, they're going to give you that little money or whatnot, and you out the door. Now, when a guy like Pazingas, he's have a future. He's going to be in the NBA for you. I don't care. There's no way you're going to sell me that one, man. I'm sorry. I have pride. There's no we all, we all have pride. But we all have bills, too. So uh, videos, but there's you. insurance coverage. What does that cover? Dude, you know? insurance. Just so curious, you, okay, actually. Okay, well, let's say if he did, if they did go through that number or whatnot. Let's say they said, okay, we'll pay you out 100%. You get hurt, you get injured, this will pay you out 100%. Like okay, 80%, but I see what you're saying. Okay, let's see. But let's but say 100 yeah. with percentage, right? So they get hey, they're going to pay him out as 100%. Okay, so let's say he's going to make, you know, $6 million and then another, you know, but they have a, the, the team option to extend this contract mm-hmm. or whatnot for the next year, right? Mm-hmm. So let's say that that happened. Okay, a guy like Pazingas is guaranteed that he, trust me, 100 plus million. Easily, max. Easily, Easily, yeah. Okay, so you're going to leave all that on the table to qualify for the Olympics, right? Everything's going to go fine. I'm not I mean, going to hurt he, myself. Yeah, can, okay, I'm just saying. That, that's we all say. We're not I've never hurt myself. myself. That's the thing of a business, man, right? I'm built you, like a machine. You can be built like whatever you want to. Do. The smart move or whatnot is you got to look at the longevity of it. We don't go out and say, okay, I'm a, let me do this because I'm going to get hurt. You know, you're, not, you're not thinking about it like that. But you got to also you gotta think about the future and all, too. You know, and that's, that's true. That's, that's very true. And it's like, it's all of this. Because the insurance is only going to cover the one year, let's yeah. say, and you blow your knee out and you go, all right, we were going to pay you a Listen, Charlie. Yeah, that's my caddy's going to stop it. Anyways, yeah, I can see where you get screwed there because then when you go to try and negotiate and you go, well, I'm a max player, I think, and then they're saying no. Oh, wait, no, Charlie. Yeah. I don't know. That's a tough one. Um, but Goran Drogic, he won the Eurobasket MVP. Slovenia won handily throughout the whole tournament. The only challenge was in the final game. They won 85 to 65. And, yeah, they keep everyone's butt. Remember Anthony Randolph? Yeah. Played for the Golden State Warriors. Right that last year. Yeah, I remember that. Mm-hmm. Okay. He had 11 points and three blocks. He got a Slovenia passport or birth certificate or is it a birth certificate? Uh, Anyways, he qualified in like two weeks to play for him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, made something happen. Yeah, he's a productive role player for the team, yeah, actually. So. Do <laughs> you think he's getting paid? Do you think he's getting paid? To play for the Olympic team? I thought you're not supposed to get paid, Alvin. Yeah, I thought right. everyone's honest in this world. Yeah, so he did on and he went. He did it before he went. Well, yeah. Okay, so he went and Because he had a grandma, a great, 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 great uh, grandma. I'm telling you, he might have had, you know, got a, a percentage of Slovenian. Here's uh, a. <laughs> so, did you think they gave him like five acres of land? And it's like, bam, here's a bunch of land for him. I don't, I don't think they got paid out. I don't think so. 
You're not impressed with this Luka Doncic guy, all right, man. No, I told you, I haven't even seen him. Oh, okay. Take a look, look, just to say, off, look. Just to say off of the year old basket, you know, what I think. He's playing very productive, but yeah, take a look then. Let me know what you think for the next yeah. one. Um, Richard Jefferson made a statement about the Cavs and the Warriors finals, and I actually agree with it upon further review. He says, the Cavs-Warriors final was a lot closer than everyone thinks. He thinks that if the Cavs would have sunk the three-point basket where LeBron James drove in with 50 seconds left in game three, uh, he was driving right, Kyle Korver was in the left corner, he drives in, passes the ball to him, Kyle Korver's shot doesn't go in, Kevin Durant gets the rebound, comes down, hits a three, and then the Cavs just go up again. And then the next play, Kyrie Irving does a stupid isolation pullback three, and it goes nowhere, and then they score again. And then it's game over. <clears throat> is that a true statement of it, or is he just reaching in? I don't know. Is, you can't really say it's so long. It was close to that before. Right? <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. Nobody said, you know, okay, we, we got these Olympic sprinters, such and such one, but he only, it was only by like point something of a second. No, the fact is, he won. End of the day. End of the day, that was 4 1. I don't care. I mean, we can all go and find. Uh, a couple plays in a basketball game that let the game go. You know what I'm yep. saying? That we can all go find that to, to try to justify it. Like, dude, okay, I mean, I didn't hear nobody saying nothing when they came back from the 3 1. Yeah, of course, people was like, oh, what's your green make the wrong heads? Which I, yeah, you can argue with that. But it's still lost. Yeah, it's still lost, right? So you yeah. can't come back and say, okay, well, we got beat 4 1. But if we would have hit this shot here, yeah, Kevin have, Durant might have not hit a three-point yeah. shot, and then Steph Curry knows, wouldn't have hit a three-point shot. I mean, you, you're still looking at, okay, well, it's 50 time. seconds left. You still have yeah, lots of 50 time. 50 seconds. Let's say Kyle, what we do hit the shot, they go a three. They still have two end, possessions. They inbound the ball. Kevin Durant hit a shot. Boom. Because he still yeah. hit a three. That's yeah. the one thing the that's like, the game, I don't know. Let's man. say the game's tied up. Okay. You come back down, Kyrie do the isolation play and miss. Boom. Bro. Or maybe, what if they, what if though, this is the only thing that popped into my head and the only, I don't know why it just popped into my head and I'm not agreeing with it, I'm just curious what's to your perspective here. So let's say Kyle Korver hits it because it's 111 for the Golden State Warriors, uh, 110 for the Cavs. Okay. So if they hit it, they're up two. All right. No, sorry. Yeah, yeah. No. Anyways, so they're up two. Does that change the fact that Kevin Durant still hits a three-point shot? I don't. Well, no, go to state. I don't think it changed. Because he still fact, a good I don't think it changed the fact. Period. That they got three points out of that play. They, you, you say no, Kevin Durant, you got play time. They but if they score, play. they got to take the ball out. Does that change anything? You get the ball out. Okay, so let's say. Okay, just curious. So let's say he ties. Okay, let's say he ties the game up. Let's say he don't hit a three. He hit a two. Okay, tie the game up. Kyrie still comes down. You know what I'm saying? Does Kyrie come down and do that? Does he not? Do they use the clock? Do they score? There's so much stuff that could happen. in the they already played, played it out. Yeah. So, you know, there's so much stuff, you know. They could have messed around and came down and decided, okay, we want to, uh, you know, the game is tied up now. Let's get a good shot and get scrambled up and somebody like Tristan Thompson has to pull a jump shot. Mm -hmm. The Golden State gets the rebound. They go down and they got a last second hit a shot. They ain't going to overtime. So you can't really say, okay, well, if he had hit this and he had to hit this to game because I don't care what sport it is you can always find a good two or three play sequence you know, where you like that could have like legit changed the game but it was um. yeah I agree with you there I think I think him trying to break that down is something a coach would do in film where you're trying to sell it to your guys for the next game and be like look if we go here here and here this is a completely different game but the fact of the matter is you guys still played out the way you did Kyle Corbin missed Kevin Durant hit a three you guys had a stupid isolation play where Kyle Korver used none of his teammates and went like one on four and then had a nice mid-range jump shot but then decided to pull it back even more to a three-pointer for some reason, which he should have just taken the two. There was still plenty of time left. But anyways, he still missed the shot. And then Steph Curry comes down and hits a two-point shot, so they just go up by eight points right there and you're done. This is what, I mean, that's the whole of the NBA season from the start. <laughs> you're saying this now, yeah. Like, why are we it's talking September. about that now, dude? Like, you, it's done. I don't care what you try to say to justify it. It's not going to change the outcome. Mm -hmm. you got another season to do that. So. Elvin. And if anyone's wondering, we were talking about this before, and Elvin was pretty adamant, actually. I haven't, I haven't seen him pretty adamant in a while. Elvin, is Stefan Marbury a Hall of Famer? Yeah. Why, Elvin? I'm just, I'm, I mean, he has numbers. Don't get me wrong. He has numbers, but 
I don't, I don't really see him being like that guy. That he never that was. That took a team. That, like, Steph, I'm already always had, like, those kids that Kevin won that. You know what I'm saying? He always had. But he got traded. Yeah. Then, and who he did have with him in New York. Steve Francis may have been out of the smoking crowd. Yeah, well, this is like this is the sad one, man. Like I mean, that's just my personal thing. I don't think I don't think he was oh he should be in all that. Should Mitch Richmond be in the whole thing? Um, yeah. He's there. No. Dude, because Mitch Richmond, no, you you take in two different bus I mean you can't. I know they're apples Rich, not almost apples Mitch anymore. Mitch Richmond average two points more but stuff on all that. Two assists more. Stuff. You gotta look at the sense. You gotta look at. I have some percent. The whole, oh, the whole I got time, the whole firmament, man. Like the whole dynamics of the game and everything. You know, bro. I, I I There's criteria for the Hall of Fame being a global ambassador, and that's gonna be one of the criteria for Steph. I know. Oh, Elvin, I know it's not the best way, but it's a way to get into the Hall of Fame. Okay. Not, dude, because you can't say it was a global ambassador. <sighs> because I'm gonna tell you what's crazy, man. Is if China would have came and said, you know what, we'll give you uh, 1.5 million the first year, 2.5, and then 3.5 after that. And the NBA team came and said, we'll give you 1.5, 2.5, and 3.5. Bet you you want to step foot in China. I don't know, Bet man. Your so don't like, no, it's not, dude. That's just how it was, man. And then, you know, it, it, it's not even like, the thing about it, it's not like he retired. You know, he did leave on bad terms, I know. It's not like he was, the, like, well, nobody else going to sign him. Not a, not after the stunts and the stunts, like whatever he done. We know what else gonna sign him, dude. Like, but wasn't. in hindsight, we're getting everyone is all nostalgic, and this is his time for being a little nostalgic. And here's some criteria. I think Mitch Richmond, and I'm really not trying to take anything away from him. I just looked at the numbers, and when you break it down, Mitch Richmond to me is one of the lower tier Hall of Famers. And I think the criteria to get into the Hall of Fame is you need to have a better resume than Mitch Richmond. And I think Stefan Marbury is on par. I don't oh, think he's got a better resume. I think he's on par. Right? I think on par is good enough. No, you I just said no, you just said he's a lower tier, and to get there, you have to have a better resume than Mitch Richmond. Here's where right. here's, here's where the asterisk is, though. Here's where the asterisk is. Here's where the asterisk is. He's globally expanded the game to China, and I know you don't want to say that because if somewhere in so? Russia, they... you think so? Yes, he's was, made. Was, um, okay, what was was Yao Ming not in the league when he left? Uh, I'm just asking you that. Yao Ming was pretty much near the end of his career. He oh, like oh so he was in there before. He was injured, though. But he, was, he was in there before Stephon Marbury went to China. Mm -hmm. Okay, then. So <laughs> we don't let that, we don't let that one marinate to the next time we have this discussion. I did a lot of research for this element. I got All a lot right. of things to say here. <laughs> Anyways, I'm supposed to sway you. I was supposed to sway you. God damn it. Anyways. <laughs> I thought he expanded the game globally more, but anyways, back to the next point. Um, he had 19 points per game. He scored 20,000 points in his career. Mitch Richmond scored 20,000 points. Mitch Richmond played 14 seasons. Stephon Marbury played 13 seasons. Mitch Richmond had 23 playoff games played. Stephon Marbury had 32. Stephon Marbury had the most runs, was at 14 games where he was an actual piece in the rotation. Mitch Richmond won a championship with the Lakers in 2000-2001, but he only played two games, and he played 40 games the whole season, and he logged no minutes in the playoffs, and he played two games probably in filler time because they were playing the Nets, and they swept the shit out of him. My point is, I think his resume is good enough, and I think what gets him over the hump is his global ambassador thing. Well, but well, yeah, we're not going to well, well, right, fine. I well, agree to disagree. So, I tell you what, so you mean to tell me that he went to, when the way that he left out of the he went to China and was like, like, you think that's what he went over there and said? Yes, and everyone was singing Kumbaya and holding hands and yeah. having a great old time. I know there was bad blood. I know they didn't like yeah. each other. I was in. But there's no... Oh, come on. Okay, anyway. Okay, I did. Anyways, more research. More research. Okay, so for his resume for Stefan Marbury, he was a two-time All-Star, two-time All-NBA third team. He won bronze with Team USA in 2004, and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I need to wait, Elvin. Anyways, and in the CBA... Said I wrote this now because you don't even want to hear these stats. But anyways, in the CBA, he's a six-time All-Star. He's a foreign MVP, and he's won three championships over there. He has a museum. Mitch Richmond doesn't have one in China. Anyways, anyways, I'll keep going. Here's Mitch Richmond's resume. So his resume is, he's got, oh yeah, and Stefan Marbury was for points, sorry, was 19 points per game, 7.6 assists, 1.2 steals, 32% from three, 43% from the 
from the field, and he had a 13-year career. So, anyways, <clears throat> Mitch Richmond had 21 points per game, four rebounds, three and a half assists, 1.2 assists, or 1.2 steals. Jesus Christ. Uh, 38% from three and 45% from the field. So he's a pretty good shooter. He was a pretty nah, good shooter. That's what happened. Man. That's what happened, man. When you like trying to have this discussion, when you come up with people and they like they like they hide like their player was like you know a Raptors player and all that. Like the Rich well, Richmond was the truth. Man. I, I would like to myself. consider myself a basketball historian. I have done my research on Mitch Richmond. He played for the Sacramento Kings for eight seasons. He had two playoff appearances with him. He got swept in both playoff appearances. How many did he step on over? He played in 32 games. No, I mean, oh, 14 not games not played with the Boston wow. Celtics when they went to the Eastern Conference Finals in 2008-2009. He played 12 minutes per game with the Celtics in the playoffs. The Celtics have on the team that was when they still had Rajon Rondo, Paul Pierce, Ray Allen, Kevin no, Garnett. Okay, he was a very I effective role player. So he played honest, 12 minutes a game. He had a like, very good role so I think, for the I team. Think one of us could have went to that team. <laughs> and like irrelevant. Yeah, it's not irrelevant. irrelevant. He was there. Right because what it is is right now you're trying to put a much shit on Mitch Richmond. I am not shitting on Mitch Richmond. I am just like, stating the facts. Because you feel like Mo Bear should be there. I am not saying. Like I am just. I feel like I don't think so. You saying all he has a museum in China. He has this. That has nothing He's to do with. He's expanded the game of basketball. I well, love basketball. Let him be in the Chinese Basketball Hall of Fame. Well, he will. He will be. He will be the top. Like. Number of, like super first ballot Chinese basketball association. He has a museum, so yes, and they'll build a whole thing around it. You know what? I'm you know what? Hmm. You know you. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. All right, listen, man. Anyways, his resume is a bit better. There's an asterisk on Mitch Richmond's little championship there because he only won. He only played two games in the playoffs. I'm not taking anything. I'm just saying, going by the numbers. Anyways, Mitch Richmond has got two times on the All-NBA second team, three times on the All-NBA third team. He is a six-time All-Star. He's won the All-Star Game MVP. He's been a Rookie of the Year. He is on the rookie team, or the first team All-Rookie team. I think Stephon Marbury's got the same resume. I think... Yeah, so he got a rookie. He got a rookie. He was on the first team. He got a rookie. Oh, he was in the 96 draft. That's a tough. That's a tough. Oh, okay. Well, no. I'm that's trying, tough. I'm trying to say nothing about 96 draft, draft is the best draft class ever, isn't it? Arguably, yeah. So that was a tough one. Oh, so that's, that's why he didn't get a rookie. Yeah, yeah it, was it was a, a tough class. class. It was a better draft class. Mr. Rizzo was drafted in 88. Who was better in 88? Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, What's the numbers then? Did he win? Did um, Marvin, did he win a championship with the Celtics that year? Or did they get beat by the Lakers? They lost. Oh, okay. nah, I just, that's all I need. Yeah, I don't need that. That's I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> this is watching the book on your face, man. Like, dude. Put a lot of time in this thing. I don't know, man. I might need to check some things. I might make that for a moment. I might have to do a little change on the slide to try to push this. I may or may not have a Georgia Tech Stephon Marbury Starbury brand jersey. I, that is irrelevant, though. Anyways, they both scored over 20,000 points. I don't even know why. <laughs> I thought Marbury was it. That was, that was my last point. Uh, anyways. <sighs> right, fine. Elvin, I know you love talking about Dwayne Wade. It's been, like a, it's been a bit of a theme for us right now. Him and the Bulls still haven't talked yet. So what does that mean? There's been no talks yet, but apparently doing way he wants to buy it. Well, Is that just like a reporter asked him, hey, Dwayne Wade, would you like a bio from the Chicago Bulls? Yeah, why not? Yeah, I mean, that's what we got it from, right? Pretty much, yeah. I don't recall him coming out saying, I want to buy out. Would that be stupid of him, though, if he did say that, though? Would that, or is that like financially? Well, isn't that a, how is that financially? He's guaranteed that money. Because he so, apparently wants a fair buyout. What does that mean? Because if he's signed for $25 million, it's 20 guaranteed, but I thought all of it was guaranteed in the NBA. Yeah, that's what I mean, we don't know. Like, I don't know the terms there. True, yeah. We know the terms, right? So, yeah. um, Maybe yeah. if it's before a certain date, it's yeah, guaranteed. Know, yeah, yeah. They got something in there. That's know, always a small writing. Because I remember Kobe Bryant had one just as I just popped into my head. 
it was like the second or third uh, regular season game in the NBA or something like that. And he got, that was $24 million. He got like 19 and a half million bucks. And that's, um, that's a smart way of negotiating a contract. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyways, I still don't know if he's going to get bought out. But who knows? To be honest with you. Yeah. Let's just put the old big what if. If the Bulls are fifth in the East, let's say in best case scenario, because that's probably the best case they could probably finish as fifth, right? Maybe sixth. Maybe. But anyways, let's say they finish sixth or fifth in the East. Do you still keep Dwayne Wade, Dwayne Wade around, and does he still want to be there? I don't know. Honestly, I don't think. Dude, but then I don't think they really care too much about that. Now. I mean, we all can't do what they have. I didn't like that. Um, but now it's like, both of them are gone. Mm-hmm. It's like he's the long veteran on that team. Right? But being around that young blood, does that kind of make him more spry? Because then they try to go, oh, look at that old man. Go. Does not that make you go more? No, I'm trying to win. I look at that man go and you're trying to win. And like, especially now, like, you can't do it all by yourself. No, like, like, does it motivate not, the other guys to get to going? No, he's not going to take over a game like Flash used to, right? So. You know, back in the day, he was like, I can True. show, I can exactly. show this and take over. And but, right now, but now, you know, he can do what he can. And then he still has to try to, like, you know, keep a little bit in reserve, right? So mm-hmm. it's like, who else can come up and step up and fill? You know, like in first year, Jimmy Butler, right? You know, Wade might come down and go on the terrace and Jimmy Butler. Mm-hmm. Rondo you know, can also take, take a game over. Okay, so team. now Dwayne, you know, Wade goes on the terrace. And now he's gassed. Do your team blow this lead that he got closed in? Do they, you know what I'm saying? It's just that kind of mm-hmm. stuff, right? So I think at this point, man, people are trying to finish with legit team. Like when they're on that, you know, the last you know, bit of their career, they're trying to finish. You think he's got five years left or three? Yeah, but if you keep getting paid wing, around ten million a year, you got a wing player too. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the thing about like, bigs. Yeah, you can kind of get away with that. Because you can oh, start right. developing a hook later on here. Yeah, remember the play? You pretty much run it from paint to paint. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, every now and then you get the occasional one that you have to go out there. All they doing is just popping and shooting. It's not like they put it on the floor making mm-hmm. them happen. But when you're on that perimeter, you know, that one, two, three, you know, slash four spot, it's tough. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm going to go put it in, you know, work until I'm 40. It's just, it's, it's tough, man. Yeah, but what if he, right, what if he joins the Spurs? I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's, it's still, it's, his minutes will be like limited, of course, right? But, I mean, when you're talking about him playing on the Spurs, do I think he can go for another three, probably five years, probably so, if he did it with the Spurs, but to put him on a team like the Bulls. Or have to be Golden State. Or to put him yeah. on a team like the Bulls and say, like, no, I don't think so. But no. you're going to have to put him on the floor for like mm-hmm. an extended yeah. amount of time. So. And I'm sure he'd love to be out there. Is, is that like the case oh, when you're yeah, that age? Like, you I want to do it, you, you just know. Like, like, trust me, you know when, um, you know when, and Kobe could have looked good by basketball. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He said, you know, his heart can take out his mind and out of the ground, but his body is like, dude, and your body is like, dude, I'm done. <laughs> it's over. I don't care. You know, you can mentally, you can feel like you can go out there, but that's the tough part. Like, even your athlete when they're coming back from injuries or even when they lose losing a step, it's just certain things that you know mentally I can do. But physically, your body is just not responding the way it used to, right? And that's the fact one of the cases. Hmm. When did that happen for you? At what age? Because you're 37 turning 38. Yeah, 37 to 38, so uh, probably around 35. Was it tough? Yeah, no, it's, it wasn't really tough just due to the fact that, you know, I was able to make that transition, right? Like, it's like, like I said before, if you go from playing off the sure athleticism, basketball, hockey, or mm. football, your prime then pretty much tip the tap. But then you go, yeah, but then you go learn you learn how to play smart, right? You learn how to just, you know, footwork. You learn how to get people off balance. You learn how to find those spots to catch a shoot your release will come from quicker. You know, Did you have a specific play where you were like as an example, let's say you're trying to spin off a guy and then you went to go try and dunk it but you missed it and you're just like oh, I feel like I caught my coming out of just like going up and down a couple of times and your legs just feel like they drain like <laughs> you just don't have on your legs don't go oh, right. just like ah right. but I mean you weather and whatnot and then finally your body just be like, All right, let's go. You know what yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but do it like yeah. That's why I told you when I got to the back end, dude, I'd love to come off the bench. Let that first 
five minutes of just chaos yeah, to come and down, let it be everybody get win the game, slow down, then put me in. Why can't you say that to your coach? Just say, hey, I'll be a six man. I'm just just that way? On your, no, it doesn't really work that way. Man. No, it just depends on. You mean 2K's wrong? It just depends on your coach. It depends on, you know, what the rest of the team look like. You know what I'm saying? Do they have somebody that can step in and fill that spot? Because you want to start a game strong and you want to finish strong. You know what I'm saying? That's the thing about it. Like, those two spots, you can kind of have, you know, up and down in between. It's a game with runs. Yeah, but you want to start a game strong and you want to finish it strong. Those two points. So what do you mean by that, finish starting strong? Starting strong, I mean, you don't want to come out and put yourself in a, a 10 point hole out the gate that you have to try to dig out of for the entire game, right? And you turn around in the fourth quarter, you make a run, right? But you're so gassed from trying to close that deficit or whatnot to you just kind of like blow out the team while you're squeaking one out. Same thing. You don't want to go out and you're not going to win every game by 20 points, right? You don't want to go out and, you know, keep a lead all game. And then down the stretch, you have a couple metal dives or, you know what I'm saying, just bonehead things happen and then you lose it at the end. Get way too comfortable. Yeah, that's what I say. You want to start it and finish a game strong. So if, you know, this person, if they feel like a you're my strongest player, then we got to push you out. So you were a coach for a little bit, uh-huh. and from a coaching perspective then. So yeah, if a team goes on an 8-10-0 to run in the first two minutes, you instantly call a timeout, right? You, uh, you blow that down, and what do you do? Do you I'm completely not, readjust I'm your game plan? Yeah, I'm not. If I'm down and in the first two minutes, a team that's running off like six, like, it just depends on how it happens. Mm-hmm. If they come down and they, they hit a three, and then we come down and you know, just got a good shot, and then just then go in and come down and hit another three. I might be, like, you know, let's just Play slow it out. It. let's slow this thing down, get something going. But if they come down and they hit a tray, boom, and then you come down and you take a shot, you miss. They come down, and lay you're not out, hustling and back. They lay up, boom, and then they come down and you take like a crazy shot. They come down and hit another three, boom. Yeah, I'm calling the timeout. That's eight on the points. You out. haven't even got a legit. Oh, you haven't even got like a legit look on the other end, and they don't run off like eight points. Yeah, you put that momentum in. They side pull it, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it just depends on how it's happening. Some coaches, they believe in a hey, new team and figure it out. You know what? Meaning, like, you know, just play? Like they're going on this run, yeah. y'all got to see y'all stop it. You got to answer this. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Yeah. Did you like that or no? It just depends. It just, like, I, it didn't bother me because of the guys I had in the side. You know, You're a smart guy. You always knew it was a game of runs. You always yeah. say that when we play 2K as well. Yeah, it's just like, it's just, I, it, was the, it was the guys I had to sign, right? Like, they they knew what they did, and that's what they did, right? Like, if they went to three points, they went to the five just because the team had a three, and they were going to come down and jack up the foot. You know what? We'll come down, we'll mm-hmm. take this two, we'll come down and stop you and get another Keep two. Keep chipping. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what we're going to do. But, um, yeah, like, that's just, you know, it's just different, you know, strategies from different cultures. Like what would you do during a timeout then when you're down 10 0 off a quick two minutes and you're like, oh shit, do you completely change your game plan or do you just tweak? But we always say you gotta have, I remember I always said that was when you gotta have an identity, right? Mm-hmm. You gotta have something that your team does well that you can always Yeah, go do you back flip to, the switch to go to your secondary or no? You can always go back to it, right? I don't care if you're starting out with this and that, you know how your team plays, you know if you're strong inside or if you got an outside, you know, so you have to be like, this play is not working. They they on top of this. We gotta you know go to our bread and butter. And you're always calm, right? You're never screaming, yelling. Oh, that's very right. Uh, you know, do screaming and yelling, but I mean, I, then that's just because I don't feel like that's how you get through. You know, through you know being up. Uh, I believe I don't feel like you know song respond better to it. It never phases me if a post started screaming. I just look at him like a crazy before it feels normal. That that he's talking that's BS, and then one end I love that I just worth holding on to. You take it to the point. That's just how it was, you know. It just didn't really ride on me, but that's when you're grown, man. Yeah. Yeah, it did, but I mean, some some coaches they, they do it, and even like I always wondered did they really do it because they were in the moment, or did they do it because they know there were like thousands of people watching them, and I was like, they're not really I think it's a little. He, I think he's a catalyst. He's really coaching, you know. And then your team mm. come out and just let's let's say they do come out and go on a serious run and get the game. That's because he got on the boys like that. And if he had <laughs> broke a chalkboard, if he had broke his little drum race, you know, it's just like so. It just depends, man. Jesus, Charlie, you're very vocal today. Sorry about the background noise, everybody. Jumping jokes, but um, not fair enough because Charlie, will you stop? Anyways, moving on. 
Um, Kobe Bryant is getting his jerseys retired. I think he's getting his number I eight and the number twenty-four. Me too. I think that's I very respectful. I, when they asked which one to do, I said, "No, you have to do Kobe Bryant doing his infamous fadeaway, and on the front's twenty-four or eight, and on the back's twenty-four or eight. It doesn't matter. You got to pick one or the other." Stuff it, stuff it, show me stuff. But anyways, yeah. What do you think? Eh? I agree with you on that. I think they should have eight on the front and the back on the back. That's when they start and finish them. Yeah, that's what I think. But uh, um, I like, I like that. You can't. Uh, they need to sell those jerseys nobody too. Nobody else would be number eight on twenty-four. Like, you know what I'm saying? The Bulls should have retired forty-five, just out of respect. Yeah, but I'm surprised they didn't. No, but I enjoy those. <laughs> yeah, I can do what y'all want with that number. You know what I'm saying? Like, he even said it during his All Star. Even when we came back to the All Star, I know I think really? it was like a long one. He was like, "What number is like 45? That's a bad luck number, man." You know what I'm saying? Like, he wasn't really fond of like number 45. It was just Why? 23 was retired. He wore it in high school. I mean, like, everything he had to really, really accomplish was done in 23. That's actually like, a thing. What? Really? Numbers and stuff. Yeah. Like, like, yeah I mean, you know, everybody. So that's why you had for number four. Everybody had like some. With me, my thing was everywhere I played, I always, I always had to have four in my number. Like, like had to be I, number four. I wore, I wore all my whole career. I won 40, 42, 14, or, uh, not 40, 42, or four. So oh, I three on the three When I was in Australia, I wore number one. And I hated it. Oh. And I wore number one. Why? Yeah. Is this just a number. Just a thing, man. But superstition, yeah. yeah. I guess. Oh, yeah. Sorry. What would you? Is there anything you had to do before a game that was like a superstition as well? Me? Yeah. Before every game? Yeah. Well, so you want to hear what I did? I like, never asked you this actually. I never mm-hmm. remember before I get I'd to the room. I would get to the room. I would go out and I would shoot. I would get a good. good game starts at seven. So what time are you there? I'll probably get there around five. Okay. After five, I would go right in. I put on like sweats and stuff. Go out, and get shots. And I'm talking about getting a real By good yourself, or do you got people not, rebounding? You, you got people rebounding, but you get you going through a lesson. Like, so when all the other guys start coming out to get their shots up, I would go in the locker room when it was empty, and I'd take a shot. And just like kind of relax and stuff like that. Would you get stretched out? Yeah, do it. I'd get stretched out. I would, um, you know. Meaning like you'd have a massage or no, a trainer like stretch you out a bit? No, I would do it. I would like go do in and I would take the shot. I would take my shower and stuff. And then while the other guys out there shooting, I would go out there and I would get my stretching and stuff done then. And then we'll come back in and we go over everything, but my God, was one thing that I always did. Like, I always had to come in and I had to go out and first get my shots up and get a shower afterwards. You know? always had a shower. That's I was weird. Young and then, you know, always with the, the balls, yeah, like in NBL, see how they call it, put a lotion on my hand. Didn't you like, like those balls, balls up? Yeah, because they feel good. <laughs> they feel balls. Like those balls. Oh, boy. Because it's like... <laughs> <laughs> But no, it's just like, I mean, your hands are sweaty, though, man. Like, I don't know how you say the bomb, it's like a rock. Like, <laughs> the rock, man, like, it felt good. Like, you put it with your hands, when your hands get a little wet, so. Oh, his yeah, head balls. Yeah, so. He liked your medicine. Yeah, that was my thing, though. <laughs> I set myself up for that one, you know. Charlie's. I am really sorry about Charlie today. He is being a pest. He's a lovable kid. He's really nice, but he's all over the stuff. And Co- uh, for Kobe Bryant with 8 or 24, which one did you like better? No, no, I was looking at that, man. They both was tip the time. Of course, he got three. He got three with number eight, two with number 24. Went to the finals three times. Yeah, like, like, yeah I know. Yeah, that, that tip the time, to be honest with you. I think it's pick which one you want in the offense, right? Like, the number eight photo was, like, beyond the athletic. You know, Kobe and all that. And the number 24 was just, like, the more poorest. I prefer foot, 24. Like, and, I, I respected his game a lot more when you'd see it broken down in him. He'd be like 32 years old. He was like 32 or 33 years old. I can't remember off the top of my head. But he averaged like 27 points per game. And when you watch it, he didn't shoot many three-pointers. It was all footwork and it was all post-work. That was the offseason that he worked with Akeem Olajuwon. And that's another reason why I respect him. And that's another reason why I respect guys like Rudy Gay. We've talked about this a lot. We both agreed if we were professional athletes in the NBA making tens of millions of dollars, one thing for sure we would do is work with former Hall of Famers, just pick their brains for like a week, five days, three days, working with them. And that's something Kobe Bryant did, Rudy Gay did it as well. Working with Akeem Olajuwon did nothing but help his game more because when he was older and he needed to use his smarts, he knew where he needed to put his feet, where he had to lean, how he had to go everywhere. Yeah. It just worked for him that way. And that's why I prefer it. When you watched him go in 2009 and 2010 when he won the finals back-to-back, 
It was like, God damn, you couldn't stop him. When you watched him against the Magic, he just picked apart every part of their defense. It didn't matter. And I hate showing praise to Kobe. Yeah, but it's just like, it's like this, man. It's great. I've asked somebody before. I'm like, who do you think is more dangerous? You have a guy that can run through a brick wall. But God, he can just run through a brick wall, right? But then you have a guy that can sit there and pick it apart brick by brick. You get what I'm saying? Like, just one of them is like spots. one of them is like boom, it's boom strength, Jack. And if it doesn't work, he's like, I don't know what to do. But the one that's picking it apart brick by brick, he's like literally strategically making it work. Head later. He can always use that muscle and stuff later, right? The same thing with Kobe, like he was a smart player always. So I'm gonna outsmart you, and then when I feel like you might be catching up to it, then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the athleticism up. With the smartness, so I'm gonna combine, combine, I'm gonna combine them, time. yeah, and I'm gonna combine them two together. That's why they always say, "Come fourth quarter, what happened?" He turned them both up, and people couldn't answer it, right? Like it was either someday, you know what? They was like, "Okay, we're gonna put this one player that thinks that basketball IQ is hard, but his footwork, <sighs> his speed wasn't there. Why well, we gotta put this young player out there? Well, the footwork and speed, is there, but the IQ is not there. That's why he used to get past them, show that shot fake, and they go <laughs> jump five feet off the floor." Little jab here, yeah, little jab little there. Jab, yeah, little jab there. Sneak through, boom, two free throws. Now they're thinking, okay, I got to block the shot. You get a guy that sees it on him, he do the same thing. Now the first thing they do is just scroll out their hand. I'm not jumping because they don't want to pick up a five. Gonna shoot. He's going to elevate all of them, right? That's so, or they're going to foul him. And that yeah. was the other thing I loved about, and believe me, there's I, my friends are listening. They'll know, oh, he really picked apart Kobe Bryant for a while. And after doing a lot of research, and you even swayed me too, Elvin, you would watch him pick defenses apart. And another thing is, everyone would go, oh, Rudy Gay is technically, statistically the better uh, clutch performer because he's sh- in the last two minutes in overtime, Rudy Gay's hit 30% of his shots, where opposed Kobe Bryant is hit 27%. And I used to throw that in all the Kobe Bryant lovers' faces, but here's the thing, Alvin, and you even said it too. You have Rudy Gay and Kobe Bryant. Rudy Gay in his peak, Kobe Bryant is peak, and there's two, there's five seconds left, ten seconds left, and you got to run a play. You're going to go, oh, well, you know, Rudy Gay's technically got more better stats and he's statistically and analytically better to shoot the three and hit it instead of Kobe Bryant. No, Kobe Bryant's getting the ball, or he's getting the ball put into his hands and he's making the play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If Rudy Gay happens to get the ball, he happens to because get the it's ball. Like yeah. this, it's like, you put it like this, okay? Who do you think is the better 50% shooter if you shoot three for six, but then I turn around and shoot 12 for 24? You get what I'm saying? Like, you look at that kind of stuff, right? How many times have Kobe had to take games oh, compared wow. to how many times Rudy Gay has had to take He had the game. ball just, it went into his hand through the offense. Yeah, that's how it worked in Memphis. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. saying yeah. But I mean, even with Kobe, like, it was like, oh, oh Kobe, please Kobe's, take the ball. Yeah, <laughs> like, you have to, like, but you can't really, you know, say, stop that. You know, uh, well, he's a better closer because he shot 3% better kind of thing. You know, it's not like one of those things. But, I mean, to you, said, no, no, I, I agree, and I don't because I think my bitterness starts from Kobe Bryant and his 81 points. And I, Sam Mitchell never double teamed him. When you watch that freaking game, it's like, what? we were up 10 the whole time. Like, this dude has got 60 points, and you're still like, nope, no double team. No, no, we're not. 75 points. I don't think we should send a double team. Oh, wait, now we're going to get 77 points. Oh, okay, now there's three minutes left, and they're up 20. Yeah. What the fuck? I, I've always been a Kobe fan. Who would you rather, Alvin? Kobe Bryant at 33 or Michael Jordan at 33? Hmm. Come on. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be, nope. I'm gonna, I'm I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna not answer that right now. You shit on my Stefan Marbury for my information. Right you say it's junk and garbage. At 33? Yeah. I, I don't know why that number just came in my head. Why? Well, I know. I don't know. It's just, I mean, they, they both had the same mentality. They both had the same order, the same heart. But I don't know. It was just something about MJ. Yeah, it was just something about MJ that was just like, I think at that age, he kind of like put, you know, Kobe. You know, he just got to put something a little bit over the top. Fair enough. I knew that was going to be a tough one. Elvin, we got cut one, train one, extend one. Except this one isn't going to be easy for you, I think. Mr. Mims. Tired of throwing you softballs. Alright, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I'm tired of giving you easy answers. All right. So first we have Eric Gordon. We're going to be doing bench players, sixth men candidates. So we have Eric Gordon, Andre Iguodala, and Patty Mills. So for the information on Eric Gordon, he's 28. He played 31 minutes per game. He had 41% field goal, 38% from, from three. He had 16 points per game. He's got the highest of the three. He had 2.7 rebounds, 2.5 assists, and half a steal. Andre Iguodala, he's 33. He's the oldest. Yeah. He played 26 minutes per game, 53% from the field goal, 20 or 37% from three, and seven and a half points per game. He's definitely got the lowest, but he had five assists, five rebounds, and one steal. So that's a little more well-rounded. Mm -hmm. And he shot 53% from the field goal, so that was pretty efficient. That's not bad. And 37% from three is pretty good too. Anyways, Patty Mills is 29, so they're all about 28, 29. So kind of similar, which I yeah. tried to pay as close as I could. And he had 26 minutes per game. He was 40% field goal. Kind of crappy there, but he was 36% from three. So that was a little bit better. But from the two-point range, it wasn't that great. He had 10 points per game, 2.1 rebounds, three assists, and one steal. And by the way, when you extend the player, you have to double their salary. That's part of the stipulation. Uh -huh. So you want an R or no one? Yes, you know. um, that's that's what the whole point of that one is. My credit is gonna be bad man. I knew it. I friggin' knew it. My trade will be a good dollar, and my stand will be a good dollar. I knew it. Yeah, that's just why. You got a beef with Patty Mills? No, I don't. man. Yes, you do. He's good at what he do. I don't. I don't dislike Patty Mills. No, no, no. But anytime it's like, I don't think it happens. Yeah, I don't dislike him, but it's just at that point in time, I'm not gonna stand Patty Mills like. I think, like I said, I think for Iguodala, I can get a good piece. To you don't think you can get a better piece than Iguodala? Iguodala is like 33. That's why. Right. So he's 33, so I'm not going to like really. I'm not looking to do no crazy Well, what stuff. can you get? Like, would you be able to? Tr would you want a guy like Terrence Ross from the Orlando Magic? That's that's just. Oh, Iguodala. Yeah. I think with, with Eric Gordon, I need a I need a point guard that can get him the ball. True, yeah, which is a player that you're talking about. Yeah, I would like so. You know, I would. I would have to get like I would want a decent point guard. True. Um, and sure, you might be able to throw me a mediocre big in there too, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just have to have somebody that can get in the ball, you know, come on screen and hit him, you know. But anyways, Alvin, so you're gonna, you're gonna give the extension to Eric Gordon, six man of the year. Yeah. You're cutting tiny mills. Sorry, buddy. Going on the waiver wire. Probably getting, I don't know if you'll get a job for that one. Then. I'm, I'm just saying, with Patty Mills, it's, it's going to take You think your GM now is going to say, is there? Is our owner giving you millions of dollars, millions of dollars, and hundreds of millions of dollars, that's a big money, big, big money. And now you're going to just cut a 29 year old productive Patty Mills for a 33 year old Andre Goudas. What do you do? Um, yeah. What do, what do you think? Who do you think you can get the most out of? If you were to put it on the trade and take, who do you think they'd be the most for? Patty Mills, I'm going to be the so that was the stumper for me, to be honest, because at 33, I think you still can get something better out of Andre Goudala because you go, well, he's the finals MVP, and you look at his shots, you go, okay, well, he played 26 minutes. He, he was he didn't start many games, yeah. so I didn't look into that one, sorry, but he had 53% from two and 37% from three. That's pretty darn good shooting. That means if you give him a little more expanded role in the offense, he might get you a little I bit mean, more. I mean, don't get it on Patty Mills, like two and a half more points. Yeah, but he shot 40% from the field goal, so that's what kind of turned me on. Yeah, and then you got Andre Godala shooting 53 and That's more efficient in my opinion. And he's averaging five, like five assists and five rebounds. That's more rounded, like I said. So he's a, he, our team will want him just for that. And he's .7 blocks, that, 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 but... Veteran leadership, you know, things like that. So you might be able to get something decent for him, but yeah, that's not the end of the day. That's what I'm doing. Extend and go ahead and trade and get the other cut. It's just one of those things where they be like, you know what? Go back to Australia, man. It's, it's just one of those things, man. Play bad. It's just one of the unfortunate situations. Kind of Over oh, and let's see what kind of fantasy football I am. What do you think? By the way, if anyone's still interested, uh, there's like two hundred dollars split between me and one other person. If you want to get in on this, by the way, I'll split that about winnings with you. So far, I am way. Let's see the matchup here. Okay, okay, okay. I'm up one hundred five to seventy one. I have Ben Roethlisberger's got a good day for me. Ooh, Mike Evans, 22 points. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, who did I start? Who should I have started? Oh, let's see. 
so far should have started well Kendall Wright should have started he had 13 points for me on that pretty good football shit ah you can't win them all but when, you know, when you're an elite fantasy GM like myself yeah, yeah, do you want to play fantasy basketball you want to try me big boy Well, listen to this now. All of a sudden, the excuse is... All right, just quick thing, Alvin. Who would you take first overall if you had the first pick then? In what? In the fantasy NBA draft. Oh, fantasy NBA draft. Who would I take first? I guess you've done no research, but I don't care. No, I've never done it, right? I would say I would take... Like well, he has to be a guy. I would just say I would take a guy like Arnold Westbrook. Who well, would you take first? God damn, you mean I'm right here. Because he is it's the rated number one right now. Because yeah. he's, he's solid. He's trolled up. Yeah, so, like, come on, I have just haven't played him. I kind of get the concept a little bit. But you're, not, you're not trying to take somebody who's going to give you, you know, 30 one night and then he might give you 10 on the next night and stuff like that. You're trying to keep people that are very consistent. And then I'm pretty sure I know you want those kind of mediocre players that, you know, who can turn around and turn it up one night just to kind of make up the difference. Fine. All right. I think it'll be a good matchup then. Yeah. Anybody, else, anybody else wants to get in, just message us on Facebook. I'll set one up. Try to get around 10 people. I think that's a good amount, right? Yeah, well, you don't want 30, because then it gets weird, because then you're going to have like Jeremy Lin as your starting point guard, and you're like, you couldn't do it with Jeremy Lin as your starting point guard. Nice try, Alvin. My phone call has been my plan at this point. I'm going to listen to this guy. He's got an insider edge now. Anyways. If anybody doesn't know this, here's a little secret that I'm going to share about Alvin. We both played the game Destiny 2. Alvin, what light level are your characters? I got all three of the 20, and if anyone doesn't know what the heck we're talking about, that's yeah. fair. We're playing Destiny 2, and we're not talking about a stripper, right? I mean, it's a video game, it ain't a person. And, anyways, it's made by the producers of Halo. Anyways, I have three characters at 20, and they're all at 220. Like, well, you better watch out, you're gonna be maxed at the 350 in no time. All right. Oh, it's sponsor time, Elvin. It's sponsor time. A big thanks to Perennial Landscaping. If you want anything done, any quotes, any grass, anything like that, you know what I mean. You want your grass cut, you want your lawn looking nice for the upcoming spring coming up around the corner, you don't want to have any crap there, you can call Perennial Landscaping at 519-532-0076 and ask for my little brother Zeth. <sighs> We're not going to give... The other shout out, Alvin. We'll save that one for next time. Our last one, though, if you are looking for a fresh haircut, and I will be seeing one tomorrow morning at the barber shop in Cherry Hill Mall. He does a really good job. You might have to wait, but it's well worth it, right? He shapes you up good, puts you in the game. <laughs> you can text him at 519-719-5721. He will get you an appointment. He's off Sundays and Wednesdays, so you can't go Sundays and Wednesdays. Too bad, so safe. Ah, that's it, though, Elvin. You want anything else to add? That's it. Okay. Just find on this. You should, everybody should see you sweating over the whole Marbury and Mid Richmond thing. I took like a half hour oh, of just up. sitting there researching and eating. As soon as you come, hey, Elvin, I'm, who's who's me? Elvin, check out every you know. Nope, don't care. Next question. Like, what the <laughs> f? Come on, man. What the hell? Like, like us on Facebook. Subscribe on iTunes. Please.